Hey guys, it's Dino. In this video, I'm going to start with games. It's gonna be a simple, really instructive games game, and it is going to be committed heavily from the first move. Uh, in this game, Black won, and I would encourage you to stop a video after every move and think what black played so we are gonna start with e4 this is one of the best first moves because you are you are fighting for the center center is really important because uh, when you put pieces in a center they are they have a biggest impact their power is maximum maximum for example if you put this knight here it can go imagine if the knight is here he, he can he can go here here see here here so eight eight square actually that's a really powerful knight and if you have a knight maybe here at the corner of the board he can go only this square and this square just two squares that's a really lousy knight weak knight that's why you want to fight for the center center squares because who controls the center it's is gonna have a better chance to win the game so of course there's other possible moves like d4 it's also a good first move also accomplish the similar things Maybe even c4 because you're fighting for the central squares. These four central central squares are key. Also with this move, you are opening lines for your pieces. Now this bishop can go out. This queen can go out. What else? That's pretty much it about that move and uh, what do you think uh, what do you think the or before that I wanna uh, uh, yes I wanna ask you why what would uh, what do you think the black should do how he should reply And uh, I gave you maybe a bigger pause than I wanted, but the move is e5. e5 also does what e4 does for for white. Open opens up these pieces, fights for the center. Next move, knight f3. Knight f3 is really good because you are developing a piece and also you are attacking something. You are attacking the pawn. And that's a really good thing if you can develop a piece and also attack the pawn. Also the general rule is to develop knights before your bishops because bishop already is doing something he's controlling all of these squares a knight from this position is controlling only three squares and it's not really doing much at the starting position so that's really good of course also you're developing towards the center of the board and I guess that's pretty much it about that move. Also, why you should develop knights before the bishop? Because you know the knight is gonna go here. Uh, commonly, the most, the best squares for the knight in the opening are those two. 
And for the bishop, you really don't know. Maybe maybe bishop is going to go here. Maybe he's going to just develop in here. Maybe he's going to develop here. So you don't commit early in the game where bishop is going to go. And instead, you just develop knights. So now you you uh, I'm going to give you some time to think about a next move for black. Pause the video and I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer is knight c6. You're also developing the piece and attacking and protecting this pawn. Of course you don't think of moves like d6 because it's gonna block your bishop. You don't do this because you're weakening your your king. You don't this do do this because you're blocking your bishop and also uh, you shouldn't develop your queen before your other minor, minor pieces these are minor pieces or even this because maybe you're gonna be you know don't don't bring bring your queen early because is it can be attacked by other pieces and they are gaining tempo or time on your queen they're just attacking it and they are developing pieces and you're gonna gonna move one for example this this maybe this and then they're developing their piece and you gonna move your queen again instead of developing yourself which is really bad Maybe you would consider this move, but it is blocking this pawn and this bishop now it's it's hard for him to get out. Maybe he has to do this or something, but there is no need for that. So definitely this is the best move in this position. Along with this, but probably this is this is the best. So now whites play c4. Putting bishop in a center, attacking these critical squares, attacking the f7 pawn, which is really important. Sometimes uh, an opponent will sacrifice a piece for this pawn just to bring your queen out, and then he can attack your king and maybe checkmate you. This is really good square for the bishop. Now, what do you think white, uh, I mean black, is going to do? I'll give you three seconds to pause the video. And the answer is knight, uh, bishop c5. We are also developing a piece in the center. This move is has similar benefits as this, so I'm not going to repeat it. And maybe they thought this is good. It's not bad, but maybe this is better. This is not really good because you're not doing anything here. This is good because you're in the center. This is one of the best. You can also develop a knight, but bishop, bishop is really good. So you wanna you wanna uh, move just one piece at the, uh, every piece once in an opening. Don't move like like knight here, for example, because you already played with this knight. It's a general rule, of course, it can be broken, but in this position, maybe you should develop your other knight, you know, in castle. So just try 
as fast as possible to get your pieces out, castle and then start an attack instead of moving a same, the same piece over and over again. Now, white plays c3. This is a common move, but it's, it is not, I guess, so good, but because it breaks the principle of uh, like development, because you should develop your pieces before your pawns. This, is, this square uh, is preserved for the knight and not for you know, the pawn. But this move has some advantages because uh, white is hoping to play d4 and then have a really strong two pawns in the center. That, that would be really, really good for him if we allow it. So what do you think the next move is for the black? Three seconds for pausing the video. And so in my first video, I, I told you to not think too much about these moves. Try to think about uh, about three minutes because that much uh, you're going to have in a real game. So the move is e7. The reason for this move is because white cannot play this move right now because you're going to take and he cannot take here because you're gonna, you're gonna take this pawn and then you're gonna move this piece that is attacked so that's a smart move you are actually developing the piece I told you not to develop a uh, queen before other pieces but in this case uh, the queen is it can be it is smart to develop it at the the second uh, rank, in this case seventh, because you know don't develop it too further from the you know first rank because it can be attacked. On this rank, it cannot really be easily attacked, and also you are doing it is doing it uh, it has some purpose here. So. Now white sees that and plays castle, and now it is threatening again, this move. What do we do about it? Pause the video. We play d6. d6 strengthens the center, and also you are opening lines for this bishop. You could have developed this knight too, but this is a, legi a legitimately good move too. Now white plays d4 with the hope that we will take this and then he will have a strong strong center that that would be really good for him. And in this case, if we take, and he takes, we cannot take this pawn because of this. This is a really common trap, and you, your queen cannot move. So what do you think the move is here? I'm going to give you three seconds. One, two, three, and the move is... Bishop b6, really, really good move because you are keeping the pressure on this pawn. Now, three pieces are attacking this pawn, and white can push this pawn, but you're gonna just come back and this bishop is blocked. This bishop is alive now, has a really good diagonal. And that's bad for him. And also, he cannot play moves like this, maybe because you're gonna go take the spawn. And that that's really good. 
taking is not good because now he has really good pawns. That was then this move c3 was justified. Instead, we just move our bishop and wait for him to do something. a4 this is a bad move because he has to uh, white has to develop his pieces not pawns he's breaking the opening rules he's going for an, for an attack instead of developing his pieces and then attacking what do you think the answer is this position pause the video a6. We have to do this. We are breaking the rule of uh, first moving our pieces in the opening and not pawns. But in this case, we have to save this bishop. A5. Attacking our bishop, obviously. Also, bad move because he should continue developing his pieces and pause the video we played bishop a6 if you thought that, uh, that we could take here you were wrong because he takes takes and he has this check and he's gonna pick up our bishop and he's gonna have a two pieces for his rook and his pawn and it is an advantage for him so taking that pawn what uh, wasn't good and he was hoping for that that we're gonna, we're gonna take this pawn but we do not bite we just put our bishop to a7 to keep this diagonal and move on with the game in this position he played h3, another bad move, because again he should develop his pieces, but he was scared of this pin. Which is really bad and you're gonna see how we are going to explode this weakness. Because uh, some really really good players like Lasker and uh, Alekain and, and other players said that uh, you should keep these pawns in front of your king. They are protection of your king. And when you move one of these pawns, you are creating a weakness. And also you should keep your knight here. And this structure is really good uh, uh, for protecting your king. Pause the video. What's the next move of the black? It is knight of six, developing another piece, attacking this pawn. And he plays takes here. What do you think we should do this here? take with the knight taking with the knight is better because we are putting the knight in the center and also attacking these pieces he takes pause the video we take with the queen Now again we are putting the queen in the center. This queen is controls a lot of a lot of squares here and has a potential to go to attack the enemy king. Also we you see now and our position is much better because this knight is gone and this knight is gone, but this knight was really really important for for protecting his king and now we are have we have a chance maybe to attack 
to attack him. The next move is this pawn is attacked, so he tries to protect it. Now we cannot take, of course, because the same thing. You know that. And pause the video. The next move is bishop h3. Really good, and we are actually uh, showing that this h3 move was really bad because it weakens the king, and now we are gonna attack him. We're gonna punish punish him because of this mistake. This is the perfect game to show you how the small, the strategical mistakes should and can be punished with uh, when you know a strategy and when you calculate the things. So now he can uh, he can not take, but He's gonna have a pawn down, he's gonna be a pawn down, so he took, and in this position, pause the video, black plate, queen g3. He cannot take us, because, you see, this bishop is really, really useful now, he has to go here, pause the video. Queen h3. We scoop up this pawn too. Why not? Just take the pawn because he has to go here. I mean, uh, just it, it is because because we are taking it with check. It, it is forcing move, and why not? King g1. Now pause the video. Knight g4. We are. Putting, uh, going forward with your with our knight and also threatening the mate. So you always want to uh, play the moves that are forcing forcing opponent to do something. For example, if you, now you are threatening something and he has to do something about it, there is no way he can play moves like maybe this because the next move is checkmate. So we are forcing him to do something and also. Uh, these moves are is easy to calculate because for example we play this move and we know that he's gonna play move like this this is the only move to defend this and then we should maybe we can calculate the next move so this move was played protects that for the, for the moment and now pause the video queen g3 King, h1, and now pause the video, bishop f2, why bishop f2, because if he takes, it is gonna be check and we're gonna take the queen, and any other move, we are threatening this move, and it, it is going to be checkmate. For example, if he plays move like this, we're gonna play queen h3, uh, knight h2 in and mate. So there is there is no chance for for white to to uh, defend this position. So to summarize. Develop your pieces. Let's see that game again. So, develop your pieces, develop your knights before your pieces. Don't uh, don't move too much pawns, maybe just two, to unleash the power of your bishops and your queen. Attack the center. Control the center. This is another move. 
Bishop c5, just second, c3, queen, don't put, don't develop your queen too far early in the game because it, it is going to be attacked. Sorry, this is uh, here, the move is castle, d6, unleashing your bishop, here the move was b6, keep the pressure, also the principle, don't take something if it doesn't, it is not uh, in your interest, just a second, a4, a6, a5, bishop a7, h3, develop another piece, and now punishing him for a bad play. Play forcing moves, attack your opponent, and this is the end. So this is my actually first analysis, probably it is not best and maybe I'm, uh, I was slow at some moment, but thanks for watching, like and subscribe and See you in the next video.